Hi, today we're going to be doing a black and white cityscape in the distance on a nighttime scene with a close-up cherry blossom branch. This is the paint that I'm using for this project. It's called Rio Tech Developing Artist Level. It's really thick, so you could do this project with just paint, but I'm going to be using the uh, Studio Acrylic Modeling Paste and it thickens it and gives it more texture. Here's the palette knives that I'm using. You could use anything with a nice straight edge for your buildings and a small rounded end for your petals of your cherry blossoms. This is a 18 by 24, so I thought the water line about one third of the way up would be nice. So I've just drawn a line across. I'm going to use this round sponge to make our moon. I'm just going to dip it in the paint, turn it on the palette. So use my palette to get the amount of paint I want on there. And I decide where to put my moon. I'm going to have my branch come across here, so I'll put my moon right about there. I'm just going to twist it on, lift it up. And we can put some shadows on the moon later. Reflection of the moon down here. This has to be directly underneath it and quite a ways down. And I'm just going to take a little flat brush and because this will be in the water, we want these to be straight across. You can go, while you have paint on there, you can go up. And we'll just leave it like that for now. And I'm just going to take a dry, round brush just so I can put some shadows on my moon. You can look at a picture of the moon if you want to do this, but we're going to put some cherry blossoms over it, so I just do some shadows like that. Now I have a bristle filbert brush. I'm going to put very little paint on it. I want it pretty dry. I'm going to go up here and just twirl in some clouds. And this will be behind my cherry blossom, so a lot of this will be covered. Because we're using black and white, I'm not going to use gray for the gray part of my clouds. I'm just going to keep my brush fairly dry and the black will come through and make the gray. And you can make your clouds any shape. The best way to, I find to make clouds is keep your brush moving and twirling. Stop once in a while and take a look, see how it looks. And then get your brush moving as soon as you touch it on there again. Go across your moon a little if you want. The lower you get, the farther away your clouds. So you'll make if you make them smaller, it'll give the illusion of a distance there.
It's always a little brighter around where the moon is really shining light on these clouds. I'm just going to touch the tops of them. This one will be very bright and then drying. So I'm just going to go around the edges of it. And I'm just wiping my brush off basically just to haze that moon out a little bit. And you can And you can do that as much as you want. Just wipe some of that paint off on your moon first. It's a good way to get practice of circles as well. Just in case I have low buildings, I'll put another one back here. So I just have a little paint on my flat brush and I'm just going to go across my, my line that I made for my water line. Just to remind myself where it is, we can put it back in later. some of those little straight back and forth lines up to your water line and again we'll put some more of these in after I'm just going to go around my moon again to make it even brighter You can make your moon as bright as you want. I'd leave it fairly dark so that our cherry blossoms show up nice. Show up nice. just to lighten up the water there as well. So I have a few different types of palette knives that I'm using. I have these squared off ones for the buildings, a few different sizes. These ones also will be good for buildings. I have this type of palette knife that we'll be using for our petals. Starting off with some black and some modeling paste on my palette. And you can see how thick this Riotech black paint is. It's not runny at all. So take a little and put it over here. We're going to add a little bit of white to it. Now we have a gray. I want quite a bit of paint on there, but I want to do it nice and flat and I want it to stay on the end of my knife, kind of like that. So we'll go up and we'll figure out where our first building, and this is going to be distant buildings first, so we don't have to come right down. And it's going to be a little bit lighter. And anything we do. We need a mirror image 
in the water. So I'm going to wipe a lot off and I'm just going to go down and wiggle back and forth lightly. So that my, and each time I do anything to the top, I'm going to come down and do this. And then I'll have my reflection. Okay. Also, I have a square part there, so I'm going to put some paint on that. And I'm going to have a big building back in the distance here. On there. And even if there's something in front of this, after the reflection of what's there will still be there. The reflection. I'll go right over top. Get a little bit of solid spot. Don't worry. We we can put a white watermark over that later. Another nice shape is this little point for just for points on buildings. You just put it. And if you come down the same distance from the water line and go from there that the reflection will be in the right place. And you just continue on with your distant buildings. These will be behind your front ones and they'll If you add a little black on one side of your building, this is one little trick to add some shadow on your building. In this case, I'm gonna add, I added it more to this side. antennas just make a nice flat spot with both sides of so there's no gob to paint and then you just can go through to get a little bit and just touch the top of your building. Okay, so to highlight the tops of them now, I'm going to clean this off and just go through a little bit of white. I don't want too much on there, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to touch the top and pull it down.
So I'm just going to go ahead and add some more distance and then some in the front. And I'll switch back and forth with my knives. Okay, so now I'm going to put some buildings that are closer. Black and the molding paste that I have. I'm going to get it on a little thicker now. Because I'm going to do some closer buildings and I'm going to bring these ones down to, a little bit closer to the shoreline. So let's have a shorter one right here. I don't want to cover up all my nice background ones, but and leave a little texture. We'll put a highlight on after. And this time it's closer to the shore, so I'm going to start closer. Okay, so I'm going to go add some highlights to these ones before I go on any further because I like to do it while they're a little bit wet still. So I'm just going to make a little bit of light color. Them ones with 
light gray on the one side mostly. Got a small flat brush. I'm going to load it with white but keep it nice and square so that all I have to do is just touch. to have every light on. Farther away, they're fainter and smaller. Here where it's a little bit messy, you could leave it, it is an abstract, but if you wanted to fix it up, you just come back in with your black, just so you know how to fix any mistakes that you might make. For a bit of reflection, these don't have to be perfect either. <laughs> 